Hello, and welcome to the 2666 six, 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 episode, six. <laughs> episode of Suck My Fanfic. I recently watched a video on YouTube of a girl discussing fanfic for 30 minutes, and I think in 30 minutes' time, she did a better job breaking it down mm. than we have in 2666 six, six episodes. So, as a result of that, Alex and I... We were pretty dejected, so we took a road trip down through the, the heartland of America, through the south. And yeah. in uh, Old Money, Mississippi, we came to a crossroad. Mm-hmm. We saw a, a man dressed very stylishly in all black. Very. And he told us that if we dedicated our 2666 6th episode to him, he would give us unlimited ratings and, and power in the podcast world. Yes. So I jumped on it. Here we are. I jumped on it immediately. Here we are. Our 2666 6th episode. Mm-hmm. Changing things up a bit. Still don't know that guy's name. No, I have no idea. Guy had a, guy had a great voice, though. Very he convincing. Did. Very good voice. Mm-hmm. Um, later, he actually invited us to this just random bar in the mm-hmm. middle of nowhere. And uh, he they had like an open mic uh, jazz night. Yeah. It was really interesting. And he just kind of slayed away oh, yeah. on a guitar. It was yep. pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah. So here we are, 2666 episode. And uh, twenty five 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 away from one one one. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, trying our very best to be, you know, the greatest podcasters ever. That's sort of why we're here. I need my. I want. I want my my money back. If that's if it doesn't yeah. work out. Absolutely. Yes. I shouldn't say money because we didn't give him money. We just yeah. we just cut our palms and then bled over him. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. I I I have this strange uh, suspicion that my days are numbered. Yeah. Every day I wake weird? up, yeah. I just hear something whisper seven. Yeah. And then yeah. I'm sure tomorrow will be six. Yeah. I don't know. I don't Time know what might that is. be limited, and I want to see us cash in on this deal we made. So right. I don't think anything's going to happen. No. Yeah, no, we're going to be fine. No, we're fine. <laughs> totally we're fine. fine. The guy was nice. Like, the guy so was so nice. nice. Yeah. So nice. So nice. Yes. So nice. Um, but he even said, I heard your 2666 episodes coming up. Mm-hmm. So yeah, here we are. Happy. So thanks to that guy. Yeah. Brought yeah. to you by nice dude. whatever that guy's name yeah. was. Hail yeah. Satan. Mm-hmm. So, Ryan, what is our opening topic of conversation today? So my opening topic that um, I came up with um, has absolutely nothing to do with anything I did. I was trolling the internet. Okay. And I found something that is mentioned a lot on some, some stories. It's kind of like the origin of some stories. Okay. Like, oh, this was started by the fanfic maker or like this was this idea spun out of like a crazy idea oh like a prompt or something it's an actual website called fanficmaker.com okay. where you enter various things and the computer will make the fan fiction for you the computer makes up the whole fan the fiction? computer may i'm going to turn my screen around so you can see it right now this is literally it. It's a series of boxes <laughs> where you put in – you can put in a preset, like a, a specific yeah. fandom, and then there's um, like very, like sliders. So I thought maybe you could Whoa. use this tool. Like oh, I'll, is it like an ad lib almost? It's, it's or, almost uh, like a mad lib, yeah. Whoa. But they are they are different because you can change – so let's start out. Let's well, let's just start yeah, out with cool, this. This is um, cool. This is cool. I like this. Do you want to start off – so I tested it myself. Yeah. I did SpongeBob and Bill Clinton, yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean standard stuff. Been done. Yeah. Got to see how it was. Yeah, 100 yeah, times. Yeah, it was, it was pretty Tale good. Tale as old as time. Pretty good. Okay, so how do you want to do you want to do you we can do it random or you can pick a, a fandom specifically? I want to do the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Ooh. which were hashtag my childhood. The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Okay, so speaking of which is the greatest opening theme song of ever. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, yeah. Yeah, no, it's stellar. So so this will like it usually you'll like fill out um, boxes, but since mm-hmm. we picked a fandom, it filled out the boxes for us. Sweet. So I'm gonna just read you the boxes and what they say as, okay. as you pick Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So the hero's name is Red slash Red Ranger. Whatever. Okay. Speaking hero. of which, that was my uh, six year old soccer team name, Red Rangers, because I, I, I loved the Power Rangers so much, and my mom was the coach. My dad was the coach. Oh, and they're like, hey, I was about to say that's a very progressive team. Well, no, my mom was a coach for all the other ones mm. because my dad doesn't like soccer. But mm-hmm. for some reason, I was like, I want dad to coach. And then my mom was really bothered by it. <laughs> it's a story. But hey, anyways. the women's uh, Amer- USA team wins the World Cup all the time. The men's don't. So maybe your mom was better suited yeah. to coach well, the team. Well, six-year-old me didn't care. Mm-hmm. All he knew is dad coached baseball and he had fun with dad. And <laughs> mom used to make him cry when he played soccer. If, if, so. if I win, dad would give me a beer. So I'm all yeah, about exactly. it. So Red Ranger is the main character or character one. Yes. And is, this, is this Jason or is this Tommy Red Ranger? Oh, let me see if they... I think it's just like they have it just generically. Okay. Oh, okay. Jason Lee Scott. Okay. Okay. The um, best Power Ranger. The hero's sex, male. You could switch that if you want. You want to gender Ooh. bend this. No, 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 no. We're good. Okay. We won't, we... You could also make this a U-fic. 
a me fit. Yes. It's about, you want to switch it? It's about me. Okay, so I'm going to change it. It's officially it, so about no me. No Jason Lee, so I've switched it to you. I am the Red Ranger. The hero's superpower is the power sword. His hobby is martial arts. Can we change that? To? Anything? Or yeah, any, 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 anything oh. you want. Literally anything. This is you. The recorder. The hobby? Yes, it's the recorder. Playing recorder. Yes. Playing recorder. Good. Playing the green recorder. This is like a <laughs> Mad Lib. Okay. The hero's hometown, Angel Grove. No. No, it's got to be better. <laughs> okay. got to be better. What do you want? Uh, you're, you're straying. Well, this is an Elseworld, so let's do it. Where, <laughs> I'm already in it. Where I can make whatever I want. You are the Red Ranger. You yeah. play the recorder, and you are from? South Park. South Colorado. Park, Colorado. Okay. South Park, Colorado. Your home world is Earth. You're going to change that? That's fine. Let's stay there. Female sidekick number one is Pink Ranger, Kim. Hermione Granger. Uh, fem- male sidekick number one is Alpha Five. Uh, I would prefer Urkel. Urkel. Steve Urkel. <laughs> Steve Urkel is Steve now. Urkel. Are you, did you change the Pink Ranger to Hermione Granger? You want it to be Hermione Granger? Of course I do. Come on. No, we're going weird with this. Steve Ur- Urkel? Urkel, like when he becomes cool, or... No, no, no. Hi! Urkel. I want Urkel. Okay. Yeah. Did I do that? Hermione. Did I do that? Yeah. Granger. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Female sidekick number two, Yellow Ranger. Mm-hmm. We want to get rid of that one? We want to keep that? No, I want Rose Tico from The Last Jedi. Oh, Rose. Okay, I'm just going to put... I want I'll Rose put Tico. Rose from TLJ. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Male sidekick number two, Tommy, Green Ranger. You going to cut Tommy out of this? I'm I'm not a Tommy fan. Okay. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay. Who's a... Uh, okay, uh... You, you're the Green Ranger. Oh, Green yeah, Ranger! Look at that. Now hey. it's an Alex and Ryan adventure. Nice. We're writing fanfic about ourselves Green now. Ranger. Actually, an AI is generating. Wait, that's dangerous. Ryan, I've heard tales. Okay, uh, Ryan is it? The villain Rita Repulsa. Uh, oh my she gosh. was actually the worst part of the Power Rangers movie. Okay. IMO. Actually, uh, that's else. a lie. The worst part was the Blue Ranger. Mm-hmm. It was the guy who played Tommy. Okay. Ooh, what would be a good villain? What would be a good villain? Thanos. Thanos. I want us to be fighting Thanos. Thanos. Actually, I choose the Rainbow Raider. The Rainbow? Who's that? Rainbow Raider? That's a Batman villain. Okay. Batman slash Flash, sort of a general DC. Rainbow Raider? Raider, that is correct. Gotcha. Sometimes even Green Lantern. So I had it originally broken up by like like lines. Mm-hmm. So it could have been Green Ranger, Tommy Oliver, or Tommy. Yeah. So I think it like gives different options, but I'm just going with the names. So they're going to say the full name every That's time fine. they mention I every like character. It. The villain's sex. Female, female, male, female. or unspecified. Female. Female? No. What is the MacGuffin? What are you going after? What's the MacGuffin? The Zeo Ooh. crystal is what's in here right no, now. No, it's obviously not that. Got to be something else. I'm kind of thinking the Ark of the Covenant, like Indiana Jones okay. style. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, this is your story. The Would Ark uh, the myself, Com- you, Rose Tico, and Hermione Grainjump be pursuing that? And Steve Urkel? Yeah. Okay. We'd be after it. Yeah. Um, it only makes sense. So we get to pick our relationship. You can do mm-hmm. none. I'm gonna. You know what? I'm going to pick this one. It's going to be the hero. Mm-hmm. It's going to be in a relationship. I can choose between the villain, female side one, female side two, mm. male side one, male side two, or the author. Oh. Now, it's a you fix. So I don't know how that would work if it I was I am you. currently in a relationship with myself. <laughs> it's a little narcissistic, so no. Thanos. You want to do it with a villain? Thanosa. Can you put Thanosa? Well, I thought we were doing the Rainbow Raider. Oh, it is Rainbow Raider. Uh, so different. Wait, mm-hmm. so Rainbow Raider's still a girl? Why we've changed that to make it female? Uh, we can make it male if no, we want to. I put it back know. to Thanos. Make it a girl, and I'm in a relationship with Thanosa. 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 Okay, I like this. And Alex is in a relationship with Thanosa. The author's name is auto-populated, and it's always Serenity Dark Moon Raven. I like it. The author's sex: female, male, unspecified, unspecified, unspecified. Yeah. And will there be an intro? Mm-hmm. We're gonna have an intro. Sometimes, mean, always, never. I don't know what that means. With, really. with intro, do let you me mean click like, on it. Haven't written this. In Should five the months? author introduce the story? Yes, always. The best fanfics do, but this this generator is incorrect if mm-hmm. they do not put Wilst and incredulously. So we're gonna find out. I did, the one I read through didn't say Wilst. It did, but they had a bunch of healthy amount of adverbs. Okay, good. Um, okay, so now we go through there. There's uh, five sliders. I'm sorry. There's four sliders. Okay, I got excited. 
they are the ratings of this. Okay. So let me read you the rating and then what it means, and then you can tell me if you want it, what percent out of right. 100 you want it at. All right. So violence rating. How much blood, guts, and gore will this story have? 50. 50, 50%. Right? Middle of the road. Yeah. Okay. Middle of the road violence, not Quentin Tarantino. Okay. Not Disney. Sex rating. That's how, me just how, just how embarrassed will your parents be if they read this? Actually, can we make this 69%? <laughs> no, let's just do 100. Yeah, 100. 100%. 100 is good. Oh, suck my eye. No, where'd it go? The sex rating is officially at 169%. Mm-hmm. It should only be out of 69%. So I can simultaneously make the joke and have the most sex. That I could possibly desire. That'd be nice. There we go. 100% sex rating, buddy. Sweet. Cliche rating. Have you heard bits of Ooh, this story before? Question 80, mark? 80%. 80%. Sounds good to me. Yeah. And then we have the ego rating. Mm. Exactly how wonderful does the author think they are? At high values, the author will even insert themselves into the story. I would make that low. Okay. Make that low. Low ego. Let's go uh, 10 or 20. 10? You, you pick. I'll do uh, 15. 15? Oh, yeah. That's nice. Okay. So this is Alex's computer-generated fan fiction. He is the Red Ranger. Mm -hmm. He is from South Park. He is questing with Hermione Granger, Steve Urkel, Rose from The Last Jedi, and myself as the Green Ranger. The villain he is going against is Thanos as they quest for the Ark of the Covenant. Thanosa, but yes. Thanosa. And this fic was written by Serenity Dark Moon Raven. Here we go. Uh, Serenity one, Dark Moon. Okay, Raven. one last thing is that we can. Oh my goodness! Look at this. Oh God, what is it? Wow, they um, there's a, there's a setting where it'll just read the whole fan fiction as a Star Wars crawl. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Episode four. All right. The title: Mighty Morphin Power Rangers: Curse of the Ark of the Covenant. Now with more gore and mobile phones. Author's note: All my stories take place in an alternate reality where the characters act this way. The story begins. Everyone who looked could see there was an undeniably ravenous animal attraction between you and Thanos. No one could deny it. No one except you and Thanos, uh, that is. They seemed blissfully unaware of their attraction to each other, unaware of their boundless, uncontrollable lust. Every time they met, they didn't show it, but everyone knew. Everyone knew what was really going on between them. A war of lust. And everyone knew that it was an unsuitable situation. No one wanted to be dragged into that war. Something had to be done. Or someone... Had to be done. You know what I mean? (laughs) So a long, long time ago, far, far away, the legendary The Ark of the Covenant was formed. In the middle of all this, finally, Green Ranger could stand it no longer. He found you and pulled you to one side. That's it. It's ruining the team. It's clear you can't function while Thanos is around. You say, what? No, I'm fine. Then I say, no, it's very clear. You need to do this aggressive cuddling with them. Everyone else in the room nods in agreement that you need to aggressively cuddle (laughs) Thanos. But... Doing the aggressive cuddling with Thanosa, isn't that um, wrong? To which I reply, oh sure, it's wrong. Very, very wrong. But just because something's wrong doesn't mean it shouldn't happen. Does it? And you say, no, I suppose not. You wandered off thinking of this aggressive cuddling. How will you introduce the idea to Thanosa? Will they accept it? You remembered the abuse you suffered as a child. <laughs> what? <laughs> Your parents never loved you. You knew. Always telling you off yep. for anything you did. But what would continue? that would continue until one day your parents were killed in a car accident. No. You were then forced to live with your aunt and uncle. <gasps> they forced you to live in the basement. No. And every night you would cry yourself to sleep as no one in the world loved you. You were also forced to do all the work around the house. But still, it wasn't enough to deserve your aunt and uncle's love. And so soon, they sent you to an orphanage. What? You didn't think life could get worse. But there you learned that life still had more horror in store for you. Because the orphanage turned out to be a really secret front for a highly criminal organization. Whoa. And they put all the children there to work in the factories and their mines. And you too were sent to work. Despite the horror of the orphanage, you were finally in a place where others were treated just as badly as you were. Hopefully, finally, you can make some real friends, you thought. But that thought, too, turned to merely a fantasy, as the kids soon saw that you were not like them. You were special, and the kids hated you for it. And so every night, when the kids would return from the factories and mines, they would force you to work more, or to make their beds, or clean the showers and the toilets. And whenever something would go wrong, the kids said to the guards, He did it! And the guards, who also hated you for being so special, believed them and hurt you. 
And so you thought that no one in the world would love you until one day an organization, this with S's, of superheroes attacked the criminals and freed all of the children. And they also freed you, is that, listener. Is that how I met Thanosa? And they said, don't worry, kid. We'll take care of you. We'll train you and you'll become part of the family. Or will you? Author's note. Yeah, I know canon is different, but this is my story. So the author has rewritten your origin. This is your new origin. I'm so confused. My new origin, rewriting it from what? <laughs> from being the Red Ranger and just growing up in South Park and being a normal teenager. Okay. <laughs> it's the trope of uh, rewriting. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, Joe Wheeler. Yeah. yeah. Yugi, where's your dad? You were then taken in by a super secret organization called government. <laughs> called go- just called, called government. government. For a while, <laughs> it looked like you were just at home. You got to train with all the secret superheroes. You were trained in all sorts of things, ranging from design and technology to using the bow and arrow. The other recruits didn't want to socialize with you. They hated you for how quickly you mastered the laser gun and how well trained you were in comparison to others. What you neglected to tell them was the only reason that you were so good was because of your horrible childhood, Katurian. How does that make any sense? I had my my parents abused me, so I'm better at a bow and arrow. Yeah, you're more disciplined. Everyone's off having a good, well adjusted life, and you're tortured shooting no, but that you'd laser. Be a gun. better bow and arrow, uh, a better archer, if you were more disciplined. Exactly, you have the most discipline. You I have, don't have discipline. You have the most to prove. These people have well cushy adjusted lives where okay. everything is given okay. to them. You've I'm had just to, questioning the computer's motives. Here. You've had to work nonstop your entire life to I, please people, I, and they still don't they care. They still don't like me. So while everyone's off having that's like, fun. That's uh, that's real life. That's real life. That's real life. Yes, that's actually real. how my life is. While people are off having fun, you're at the you're putting in extra hours mm-hmm. at the laser gun range, yep. just blasting away. That's what I do. Getting better, and they hate you for it. Damn it! Because you're so darn good. Haters. One day you were called forward. You had successfully accomplished the most difficult part of your training. So good you had beaten the previous high score. You know that now that you had beaten the previous high score, you were sure to get a place on the greatest team the world had ever seen. Power Rangers? So you went to your commander-in-chief, Ryan. But when you got there, suddenly, there was more than just that Green Ranger. There were also others. You said, what's going on? Don't worry, Captain Green Ranger, also me, I'm the captain, said. (laughs) It's all going to be all right. But you knew this had to be a trap. That much you would learn from your horrible childhood. Quickly, you kicked the table into Ryan's chest. Rose from The Last Jedi tried to stop you, but you were too quick and took a gun from the wall. There were, like, loads of guns and other weapons displayed on the wall. I won't let you do this to me, you said gravely. I will be free. The others didn't want to risk being shot, and you took the file from the desk that had your name on it, and then you ran away from the government, and away from the other recruits. Shit. And you were right not to trust them, for when you looked in the file, it turned out they were planning on selling you out to Thanosa. Ryan, what the fuck, dude? Why would you do that? I had reasons. I had reasons. I had my reasons. I had to protect Rose from The Last Jedi. (laughs) You and Rose are in a relationship. (laughs) Yeah, someone would ship that. But what was you to do now? All alone in the world, who could you trust now? Thanosa? You finally found a moment to pull Thanosa away from the others, to have a private moment. This is like cutting back and forth in time. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. So originally it starts with us saying, hey, you got to get over with it and just bang Thanosa. Yeah, yeah, And you're like, nah. And then you wander off and you think back on your life. And you have this huge vignette about the past. Mm -hmm. So now we're back in present times. Yes. You find a moment to pull Thanosa away from the others, to have a private moment. You... We have to do it. I know. My team told me as well. (laughs) Apparently, our feelings are causing problems for everyone else. So we agreed. We finally let our feelings out of their cages of repression. They have been caged in all this time. Yes, for the team. No. For For us. I knew it. You leapt on Thanosa at that moment. The raging rabbits that were locked up finally released. Ew. You and Thanosa quickly become a ball of body parts, nose, buttocks, and hands all tangled together. <laughs> yeah. You didn't know what to focus on, so you just grabbed a spare piece of manhood and dived in. <laughs> <laughs> more, 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 whispered Thanosa to you. Wait, was my spare piece of manhood? Their lovemaking was like a sunrise of penises. It's like they were everywhere, inescapable. Not that either of them <laughs> wanted to escape them. Things got messy from that what? point on. 
Nearby, the, uh, the others occasionally heard screams, but politely ignored it. <laughs> this had been coming for far too long to ruin it now, and this team's bonding was very much needed. You sat down on the pavement. It was raining loudly, and people were hurrying down towards home, of course, ignoring your sobbing. The world had been unusually cruel to you. First, your horrific childhood, where you were treated like nothing more than a slave, then the disappointing time at the government. It all became a bit too much for you. So you put on your iPhone player and listened to the soothing tunes of Like a Virgin and A Whole New World. Then all of a sudden, what? footsteps approach, but you didn't hear it because of the music. And you looked up and find a mysterious figure with a long raincoat. What's wrong, kiddo? said the mysterious stranger. I'm fed up with life, you said. I'm so good at everything, but everyone hates me for it. I can't keep going on anymore. And in the softest voice, you spoke the darkest truth. I don't want to live anymore. Oh, my God. The stranger laughed out loud. Oh, don't worry, dear you. Life will turn out better for you. How do you know, you ask? Because the world hates me, too, the stranger said. And with one swoop, the stranger removed the coat. It was Thanosa. Well, I'm so confused. OMG, you said outraged. Calm down, young <sighs> one, Thanosa said. I, too, am misunderstood. Oh, I suppose that could be true, you said. Now come with me, Thanosa said, and reach for you. Let me take care of you. We're soulmates, you and I. The world is against us, but together we can fight for our freedom. For freedom, you said, as you accept Thanosa as a hand. Mm -hmm. And together you go off, and you are finally happy. Is that the end? And then the end is... Sorry it's taking so long. We'll write soon later. <laughs> but that's the end, yeah. Uh, okay, what happened to Urkel? Where was the Ark of the Covenant? Where's literally anyone? And where's Hermione Granger? I'm extremely upset. And also, uh, what the fuck? I, you know, uh, unfortunately, cum cumulatively, I've probably read... It's been, a, it's been quite a lot of fix in pursuit of ones that are worth sharing. This isn't as bad as some of them. Computer, I, I'm, computers I'm little, are better than people. I'm a little, I'm a little bothered that the computer uh, can write smut better than I can, like way better than I can. It was like a sunrise, sunrise of penises. <laughs> yep. A computer wrote that. Wow. Yep. This is um, this is exactly how it wanted to write this story. So the computer, computer did you dirty. You know what? The computer realized we didn't need to focus on Urkel. Mm -hmm. Or Hermione Granger. Or even me. Or even you, really. Mm -hmm. It was really a love story between Thanosa and myself. Mm -hmm. So No mention to any Power Ranger powers at all. Th there was nothing Power Ranger about that. Uh, there wasn't even any remote reference to an alien <laughs> <Also> besides Thanosa. <laughs> uh, None of the things we actually no. put in kind of showed up, like... Uh, I'm going to be honest with you, Ryan. I think my hot take on this fanfic writer, I'll give it a 3 out of 10. Yeah, this is... um, It's chuckle-worthy, but it uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. Of course, how much fanfic really does on the whole? Mm -hmm. You know? I think this this probably could have could have could have uh benefited from being run multiple times let's run the simulation back a bunch yeah, of times yeah who has the time for that no we don't have the time and if for you that. don't hit it on the first shot i mean that's all you get it's like hey, an audition you gotta I, be on i shoot my shot and i brick mm -hmm. sometimes it just happens j cole mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know well thank you for that riveting opening <laughs> topic i'm looking uh, at like all the other randomly generated titles and they look so interesting compared to ours you versus thanos uh Showdown, the last struggle of good and evil. These are all good. But uh, we got we got what we got. I mean, yeah, hey, we got what we got. got we That's got. all that matters. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, The Secret of Sausage. I mean what like oh, I wanna shit. read that. I wanna read I all of I do wanna read that. Alright, so what is the what's the fic for this week? The secret of the Gherkins. Um <laughs> so I don't think that's it. Wow, you'd really like this one. This one looks fantastic. Okay, moving along. Um keeping on choice of Keeping on point with our choices today, Okay. I have a couple fanfics that you can choose from. Ooh. Which one would you like to hear? I'll Ooh. give you a quick, quick, quick synopsis. Please do. And then I want you to just jump right in and choose. All right. Okay. So one of them is called The Day of the Barney, and it's a trilogy. And it's about a post-apocalyptic world where Barney is a Pied Piper of sorts leading children to a different, uh, you know, down a different path. We'll say it that way. Okay. 
There is a absolutely masterstroke collection of short stories um, about Garfield, in which he is an all-American hero and saves various celebrities and is injected into different, um, you know, popular culture things. Does he get uh, plastic surgery? Larger, I don't know, uh, enhance something <laughs> on his body to make it larger? No. Okay. He does not. Okay. He does not. Doesn't sound like a good story, but okay. <laughs> um, and then we have Curious George Goes to Paris. Which would normally be pretty interesting, but he goes to Paris during the 1940s. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So I'll let you choose between those magnificent stories. This is all about choices. Hashtag choices. Watch choices. Choices. 666 choices. Watch the choices. Choices. Ryan is pro-choice. 666 pro-choice. Okay. I am very curious to see how the beloved... Is he, is he a, what is he, a chimpanzee? Yeah, I think so. Is he a, he's not he a gorilla. A no, he's not a gorilla. Monkey? He doesn't have a tail. He doesn't have a tail, so he's a, he's a great ape of some sort. You know what? My favorite great apes are gibbons. I'm going to say he's a gibbon. I'm sure there's a, a there is a Curious Wait, George Stan just gibbons screaming, apes? screaming at their yeah. phone right now. Are gibbons lesser apes or are they great apes? Uh, hey, sorry, biological anthropologists. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm fucking up on this one. I should know. Sorry, really Darwin. Should. Darwin actually listens to this podcast. Shout out. Thanks, yeah. Darwin. For, Thanks, Darwin, yeah, for, for the sponsorship. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so George of indeterminate yeah, origin. See how, okay, uh, does the man in the yellow hat come? Oh, yeah. Many times. Oh, I mean, no, yeah, he's no. A, no, I'm just kidding. No, this is, um, yeah, so you would like to hear Curious George goes to Paris. In 1940. Okay, I will collect all my other stories and yeah. put them into my bag for another day. <laughs> another rainy yes, day. another day. You've chosen your path. Let us walk down it. Ironic. So, this is called Curious George Goes to Paris by Ty Ty Tydrick, and it is on fanfiction.net. Ty Ty Tydrick 666. Um... Curious George goes to Paris. Curious George was happy. They were going to France. The man in the yellow well, hat... Oh, okay, sorry. I was going to say, they? Do they just not gender Curious George? His name's George. <laughs> they were going to France. Them were going to France. The man in the yellow hat told George they were going to see the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Curious George was happy. The man in the yellow hat packed bags for them, and they went to the airport. Zay. George thought all the airplanes were exciting. Then the man in the hat... The yellow hat gave the airport people their tickets, and they got on the plane. George was scared at first, but soon he was having fun on the airplane. But soon, Curious George became tired, so he decided to take a nap. When he woke up, the man in the yellow hat told George they were almost to Paris. Curious George looked out the window and saw the Eiffel Tower gleaming majestically, its light sparkling in the darkness of the evening. Can I guess what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Is Elvis going to shoot out of the Eiffel Tower and start... Being magical and Different. making dogs speak. Different fic. Very close. Different fic. That's from Drabble Fest 1, Episode 6. You should go listen. Dab, dab, dab. Listen now. 666. Listen episode now. Episode 666. Then George heard an unfamiliar sound. It was a loud boom, and George saw lights flash somewhere in the distance. The plane shook suddenly as the shot hit the tail, bursting the rear half of the plane apart in a fiery explosion. Oh my god. The man in the yellow hat screamed and grabbed onto George as the front half of the plane descended rapidly and out of control, and George became dizzy as it began to spin. People screamed and cried all around them, and the plane quickly fell towards the ground. There was an earth-shattering crash as the plane hit the road face first and exploded. The carnage was horrible. Glass and mutilated chunks of plane littered the ground. George and the man in the yellow hat linked from the wreckage and sought shelter. But the place was a war zone. Dead bodies were strewn here and there, and gunfire could be heard ever so often. After looking for nearly two hours for help, the man in the yellow hat said aloud, Perhaps it was a bad idea to visit Paris in the middle of World War II. Dear God! (laughs) George growled at him, as any monkey would. He was hungry, hurt, whoa, whoa, and tired. Whoa, whoa, Did the author just say monkey? Dead monkey. Did you just miss species George, whoa. motherfucker? Ty, 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 six, six, six. You got some explaining to do. Fuck is wrong with you, dude? The fuck out of here. George growled at him as any indeterminate species would. He was hungry, hurt, and tired. He began yelling at the man in the yellow hat, but then stopped after he realized the man in the yellow hat couldn't understand him. His ears perked as he heard mumbling in the distance. He cried happily and ran towards the voices, but he slowed as he realized they were speaking in a strange foreign language. They stood together in the rubble of a street, and a large bunker lay ahead of them, housing the mysterious voices. I don't like the sound of those voices, said the man in the yellow hat. They may be Nazis. I think we should retreat for now. 
<laughs> but Curious George had realized there was no other option. He waved his hand for his partner to stay put, and he used insane monkey stealth. Monkey again. Okay. I'll let you get away with that one. One more time. I'm going to lose it. Yeah. He used his insane, indeterminate species stealth to sneak <laughs> up to the bunker. He noticed the window and sneakily hopped towards it, making sure he made no noise. The voices were definitely German, George deduced. He stuck his he stuck his little indeterminate head up near the window as far as he dared. There sat seven Nazis, laughing and drinking around a table covered in cards. The air was thick with smoke and from soldiers' cigarettes. Their guns lay to the side and their ammo lay scattered here and there. George noticed a radio and some medical supplies. He signaled for the man in the yellow hat to move up. Soon they were next to each other, and from underneath his hat, the man in the yellow hat pulled two large ninja stars, which he always carried with him. I knew that was coming. He passed one to George, and then pulled out a small knife. This he also gave to George. The man in the yellow hat gave the signal, and George expertly threw his star through the light hanging from the ceiling. Nearly at the same time, the man in the yellow hat passed his through the lamp on the table. So they've like, Batman mm -hmm. begins, goo, shut yep. out the lights. Super cool. Then, as the Nazi's voice rose in confusion and anger, George pulled himself through the window and put his knife to good use. Within minutes, only George remained in the bunker. The man in the yellow hat came in the door after George unlocked it, and they armed themselves with the deceased soldier's weapons. They bandaged their wounds and fiddled with the radio. They couldn't, unfortunately, get any friendly signals, so they salvaged food and drink off the bodies and continued walking. They continued in silence, stopping their progress to hide from passing vehicles ever so often. Soon George became sleepy, so they decided to rest and took turns keeping watch. As the sun rose the next morning, they got a better understanding of their surroundings. They were several miles from Paris, which they could see war-torn and broken in the distance. They continued, keeping to the sides of the road and in the tall brush. Soon they came upon more Nazis duking it out against a squad of British soldiers. They ran to the house in which their allies were trapped, where they met a tired and wounded Corporal McFluffin. Corporal McFluffin? Corporal McFluffin. <laughs> what does Corporal McFluffin sound like? They have arrived! They have surrounded the house at three angles! It Yelled, sounds like a... Do a barrel roll! It is. <laughs> barrel roll! <laughs> Yelled Corporal... It's Corporal McFluffin. Corporal McFluffin, barrel roll! It is the public domain Corporal McFluffin. <laughs> over the roar of the gunfire. The only way out is into the city, and we could get no support from there. It also, also sounds like, Nixon. like Richard <laughs> M. M. Nixon. Nixon. The only thing we can do is wait it out until reinforcements arrive! George could see the corporal's soldiers would not be able to hold their position much longer. They were fatigued, and George knew if something didn't happen soon, they would all perish. The man in the yellow hat seemed to be thinking the same thing as he loaded his gun and nodded at George. <laughs> George understood. They were going to take action. Lock and load, monkey brains. <laughs> monkey fur. All right. <laughs> Give the soldiers a chance to make it out alive. After explaining their plan to the corporal, they left out the door towards the city. After running a half mile, they swooped around wide behind the enemy lines, so they're flanking them. They spread out, and soon George and the man in the yellow hat could see the Nazis, busy bombarding the fortified house. George debated on whether to put his knife to use or to go for a surprise attack approach. But in a moment, he flipped out his knife. Two Nazis fell to the ground with ninja stars in their back as George stealthily approached the remaining soldiers. He took out eight before he was noticed. There was a lot of yelling, and George could hear bullets whizzing in his direction. He hopped behind a broken wall and threw his knife into the chest of one of the attacking Nazis. Then he pulled out his AK-47 and oh. emptied his cartridge into the enemy. They wouldn't have no. AK-47s. That's a Russian, it is a Russian made movie. weapon. MP-30s, I believe. Maybe he found... Well, they did say they got the guns off of the deceased bodies, didn't they? But they were German bodies. They were German bodies. So it'd be an MP30. Yeah, he wouldn't have found it. No. Yeah. There were no Russians in, in, in France. Um, he and the man in the yellow hat began pushing forward, but were soon outnumbered and pushed back. They hopped back to the wall as the Nazis streamed in, then back again to the house. They pulled themselves inside as one of the British soldiers cried, They have a tank! Why do they always, why do these things always happen to me? This is a very self-centered British really soldier. really is, dude. All of Paris is under occupation. Just because he was there. Ugh. Oh. Always oh, my Always. Life. When I'm on vacation. <laughs> Jesus. When I was told I was going to be stationed in Paris, I thought, oh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. And then the Nazis invaded. Of course. Of had course. to be. This had to happen to me. <laughs> Curious George peeked out the window and gulped as he saw they did indeed have a tank. Mm -hmm. It had a big gun, he noted, but this was no time to panic. 
George took action and grabbed the man in the yellow hat's yellow hat. George dug his hand deep into the hat and pulled out 14 grenades and three bazookas. Okay. He passed them. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, yep. He passed them around. I'm, I'm following. He passed them around, keeping one rocket launcher and passing the other two to Corporal McFluffin and the man in the yellow hat. Mm-hmm. They took aim and kabam! The house shook as the tank shot, blowing a hole in the roof. Corporal McFluffin swore as he missed the tank, sending the rocket down the road four yards away from the target. The man in the yellow hat took careful aim at the tank, taking his time. After what seemed like nearly a decade, the man in the yellow hat again took aim and missed completely. Whoosh! The tank took another shot at the house, blowing the bottom floor out. Fortunately, the three of them were on the second floor of the house. If you blow out the top and bottom floor, wouldn't the second floor fall? No. Okay. Mm -mm. Not in uh, fanfic physics. Gotcha. If if Curious George is a monkey... Dude, fan physics. Fan physics? I would love someone to write a fan fiction about a physics textbook and just create their own physics, laws of physics. That's amazing. Fan physics. Let's do it. I'm on it. That'll be our next generated story. Main character, the quark. Unfortunately, the second (laughs) floor stood on top of the first floor, and without the first floor, the second floor would become the first floor. I called it. So it does fall. The floor caved in as the wall below was torn apart, and George and the man in the yellow hat fell down into the rubble of what used to be the kitchen. George recovered his bearings, and he doesn't even aim. He just 360 no-scopes the bazooka, (laughs) and he nails it. The rocket spiraled right into the tank, exploding with a huge boom. As the dust settled, George let out a cry. I feel like this is like Planet of the Apes. He just like lets out a guttural roar. The tank still stood. He quickly loaded another shot. The tank fired and George's ears rang. It hit the ceiling above them, blowing away the rest of the house, causing it to crumble on top of them. George pulled himself away from the falling debris as the house fell down on top of them. The roof tore off and landed with a crash in the front yard, so the house now stood diagonally without a roof. I will say I have a problem with Curious George hitting uh, the tank first try. Why? Unless Curious George had already used a bazooka. Well, he knew exactly where to find them. Well, I knew he knew where to find them, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean he's used it before. Has he trained with it? He, I feel like he's done a fair amount of training. The only reason I'm asking is because I have a friend who's in the National Guard, mm-hmm. and he actually used an RPG. Whoa. And he said that what a lot... It, it wasn't live, but it did have the rocket on it. Mm-hmm. And he said what a lot of people don't realize with an RPG is that you think you're going to have to like hold it and almost aim it down. So when uh, the force... The kickback. Yeah, the kickback... But he said that there's almost no kickback on it. Wow, so, just so smooth. The, the first time you see someone use an RPG, they almost always hit the ground like five feet in front of them. That does not sound like a good place for an RPG to land. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, especially not a live one. No, because he, he literally said, he's like, yeah, dude, I took it on my shoulder. I saw all these people messing up. And in my head, I was like, nah, I'm not going to mess up. And then right. he just shit the bed like everybody else. <laughs> like, he, he's like He's like, yeah, it is not like that. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm going to... So, s- unless... I'm just, I'm just saying... I want this to be as believable as per, as possible. So George George essentially climbed into the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon, having never flown flown spacecraft before, and just out maneuvered several Imperial Tie Fighters. That is correct, Ray. So maybe maybe there's something more to Curious George. Oh, is he? But now I like to think Skywalker. He... <laughs> Rise. He has Skywalker blood. He is a Skywalker. Um, Ah, ah, ah. I don't know how to do an, an emperor laugh, but He's you bad. get it. Some things never die. Okay. You get it. Um, so the house is collapsed. He was breathing heavy. He, he sees the uh, man in the yellow hat um, mm-hmm. covered in rubble. He was breathing heavily, and his yellow hat lay flat and ajar on his head. His eyes were closed on a pained expression. George stumbled over to him as he coughed. <coughs> George, said the man no. in the yellow hat with a whisper. <coughs> George. <laughs> He stroked George's head as George held his hand. His breathing grew fainter and less frequent. Finally, he looked Curious George in the eyes and said, so quickly George could barely hear him, Let us cross the river and rest under the shade of the trees. Then the man in the yellow hands... Is that from something? I have no idea. Okay, I have no idea. (laughs) Is that scripture? I'm like, Jesus! Then the man in the yellow hat's hand grew limp in George's. George's eyes filled with tears as he realized the man who had raised him from a baby... God, it's not, he's not a monkey! He's not a baby monkey. Fuck you, Ty, Ty, Ty. 666. Six, six, six. Six. Fuck you. 666. Six, six. Remember that. Who had raised him from a baby uh, indeterminate primate was gone. 
taken from him long before Wait, his time. Wait, what the hell? That's a Stonewall Jackson quote. <laughs> Let us cross the river and rest under the shade yeah. of trees. <laughs> <laughs> I think he said that as he was dying in the Civil War, oh, fighting for the Confederacy. <laughs> what the fuck? The man in the gray hat, more like it. Oh my god. There you go, a little context for you folks. Um, so him, his grows limp. Um, Curious George cried. <laughs> you're, you're, you're speechless over there. I'm just, I'm just, I'm imagining like now turning this into like a Civil War allegory <laughs> and just like, no, no. The yellow, bad. the man, it's, oh yeah, see what, yeah, now let's, uh, let's leave that where bad. it is. Let's just go. Let's leave that where gun it is. Gun it, gun it, get out of here. He cried, <laughs> let's hit it, Doc. He cried, tears spilling out onto the dusty ground. Soon, Ooh, spill the tears, monkey. Mm-mm. Soon the sadness was replaced by a new emotion. George wanted justice. He wanted to avenge his friend and mentor. George was mad. Stonewall Jackson. He vowed then and there he would do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes! Whatever it takes to defeat the man who had done this. As soon, George thought, as he knew who that man was. Mm -hmm. There were heavy footsteps on the wooden floor. The Nazis had arrived. Then one spoke in a heavy German accent. I apologize. That's me saying I apologize for this. (laughs) I am Captain Hook. I have done this. Every bit of it. Every little last bit. I am solely responsible. Now you must surrender or more will die. George turned. The man had caused the death of his friends. As the Nazis rounded up the living British soldiers, George pushed his hand into his old friend's yellow hat. Did he say his name was Captain Hook? It's Captain Hook, yeah, from Peter Pan. Captain Hook from Peter Pan? Mm -hmm. Yes. With a German German accent. Captain Hook? Yeah. Does he have the hook? Yeah. Okay. In the irrational fear of clocks. Okay. Does that mean that George is going to pull out a crocodile? That'd be pretty sick, but here we go. Okay, we're going to find out. George pushed his hand into his old friend's yellow hat. His hand gripped something round and cool. He pulled the pin and looked at Captain Hook. Then Curious George said, Captain Hook. (laughs) Captain Hook looked at him. Catch. George tossed the grenade. It exploded with a resounding boom that caused the remainder of the house to tip onto its side, shattering windows and smashing French China. French China. French China? Don't think about it. Okay. George whipped out... That sounds like a uh, rapper name. (laughs) A is French China. With a Y. C-H-Y-N-A. Okay. Um, Okay, he throws the grenade. George whipped out his AK-47, which is not standard issue in uh, the, Mm -hmm. the Third Reich. Okay. And before the Nazis knew what hit them, they were on the ground, dead. He walked over to Captain Hook's charred body. Though the man in the yellow hat's death had been avenged, George, Jackson. George sensed something was wrong. It didn't seem like enough. It was just anticlimactic. The story couldn't end here. It would be too lame. Then George saw something that caused a manic glint in his eye. Mm-hmm. On Hook's uniform was the Nazi symbol. George thought of what the Nazi symbol stood for to him. Fear. Anger. Hatred. Hitler. Adolf Hitler, the man who had caused (laughs) all of this. Perhaps, George thought, Hitler must die. Then the story would be able to end. It would be a fitting ending. Yes, yes, that was it. Adolf Mm -hmm. Hitler must die. Reinforcements arrived in the form of several armed trucks. They were driven back to an airport, and a week later, George attended a solemn funeral for the man in the yellow hat back in the United States. George walked over to the casket and made a silent vow. Hitler would pay for what he had caused. George finished paying his respects and walked out of the church. Back at the man in the yellow hat's home, George fished a well-used military-issue sniper rifle from underneath a floorboard. <laughs> it's like John Wick, like breaking. That's a, yes, he paid for a one-way ticket to Germany via Mastercard. Nice product placement. Yeah, <laughs> locked yeah. the door behind him. He took a look at the man in the yellow hat's home, what he had achieved and worked for. One more time before he set off, he caught the six o'clock flight and bought some airline peanuts. George's heart began beating faster and faster as the plane descended and landed in Germany. And by the time he had collected his luggage, it was quick, steady, thumping. Thump, 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 thump. George took a walk at the war... George took a walk? George took a look at the (laughs) war-stricken country and began watching for Nazis. He had a shotgun in his back pocket if he needed it. Wait, they had MasterCard during World War II? I yeah, don't think so. I guess. Okay. And they went all the way back to the U.S. to mourn the loss of the man mm-hmm. in the Alhanda that came back. Okay. okay. And he began walking. Uh, he had a shotgun in his back pocket if he needed it. And he began walking towards his destination. 
where Hitler lay unaware of his imminent doom. As the sun began to rise, George found a dumpster that seemed safe to sleep in and took a quick nap. Noon rolled around, and George stealthily continued through the suburbs. He was pretty sure he was in the right city as there were hordes of Nazis all over the place. The flag flapped wherever George turned. But George could sense something. The Nazis were losing. Hitler was losing. Dictatorship was losing to the power of the Allies. George walked all through the afternoon into the evening when he suddenly realized he was in the wrong city. After swearing aloud, oh kicking God. any stationary yeah. object in sight, and could happen to anybody. He also roundhoused two drunk Nazis, badass, just to let the you know anger out. Yeah. George commandeered himself a vehicle and sped out onto the open road nearing the edge of the city. He flew past the city's borders and raced down the highway through the battered countryside. His car eventually died after about a day of travel, and George continued on foot her hand foot because he's like a mm-hmm. chimpanzee yeah. he had known it would be a tra- dangerous treacherous journey but he didn't think it would take four days to get to berlin what city was he in um not clear probably something that had already been taken back by the allies okay finally he arrived at Führerbunken, <laughs> Führerbunken, <laughs> where he knew hitler to be hiding he st- he staked the place out and found a promising site nearly 300 yards away he set up his equipment atop a large office building and waited. George waited several days before spotting his prey. Finally, Hitler walked out into the open. He was just there. This was George's time. He raised his rifle. This he had made sure the scope was sighted in carefully. George aimed. It was Hitler's time. George thought of the man in the yellow hat. There wasn't even the slightest breeze. This was the time. Curious George took his shot. Curious George ran away from the scene as quickly as he could. The shot had ricocheted to the city like a bomb burst. He shot off at a flat sprint with a certain sense of satisfaction and pride. The man in the yellow hat had been avenged, and George had let a load off of his fury shoulders. Here was the climactic ending, and here is the end of this story. End. Wow. Touching. Mm Mm-hmm. I would say it ranks just a little bit above the computer-generated story <laughs> and a little bit behind the Air Bud one we read. <laughs> wow. Solidly in the middle of the pack. So, so, solidly in the middle bottom of the pack. <laughs> <laughs> I, I chose wrong. I did look it up Okay, as you were finishing up the story because I wanted to make sure we knew. So apparently he is often referred to as the little monkey. Mm-hmm. However, yeah. he is indeed an ape because of the proportion of his legs sure. to his arms. Yeah, he's got longer arms. Yes, and yes. Legs. Yes, because that is for uh, brachiation. Mm. You need longer arms to swing, mm-hmm. which is very common in the great apes and the apes. Which he does a great deal of in the, yes. in, in the source yes. material. Yeah. Uh, there is a single monkey that does not have a tail. It's a Barbary macaque, and it is not curious george oh so george is a monk is an ape wow i almost don't you, i almost messed don't it up you, myself don't you tie 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 six 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 so curious george is an ape an undefined ape mm-hmm. but he is an ape an ape of indeterminate origin of an indeter- indeterminate origin the only apes that don't have the uh that proportion mm-hmm. of legs to arms mm-hmm. is us hmm well, we can but agree. We are a little different than the rest of the apes, anyways. Whatever Curious George is, mm-hmm. whatever he chooses to chooses to identify as, he is first and foremost a hero. Yes, a war hero. He did kill Adolf Hitler, mm-hmm. which was covered up. Yes, totally covered which up. Which is fine. That's okay. And the Führer Bunken. And the Führer Bunken. Because honestly, the only person that needs to know that that happened is George, because mm-hmm. he avenged his friend, right. and that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. So. The venerable Stonewall Jackson. Stonewall Jackson. <laughs> I love that scene. If we're going to go into compliments of that, yeah. I, I love yeah, what, that What are your scene. compliments? Can oh, you compliment it? The, um, just, you know, after kind of a, at my criticism, mm-hmm. after kind of the drawn out standoff with the tank. Yeah, with Captain the, Hook. Um, Captain Hook just kind of coming out of nowhere. That's fine. But the, uh, the yeah, man in the yellow hat death scene. Being Stonewall Jackson. George... Yeah, his hand grows limp, mm-hmm. breathing grows fainter and less frequent. Just really touching. Yeah. And then I, I really buy that turn. Yeah. I buy George's turn from sad mm-hmm. to angry and, like, right. wanting revenge. I mean monkey business. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. It was a bad pun because it's no. still biologically incorrect. But I'm just going to go with it. I mean ape business. I mean, yeah, ape business. I mean ape escape. Yeah. And uh, I love. I always love that, hey, Captain Hook, 
Catch. 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 Oh, <laughs> that's the only enough. line he said in the whole thing. His only speaking line. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, as a crack fic, as just something fun, uh, short and fun to read, it wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. No, not the worst thing we've read that's a crack fic. No. Very similar to National Treasure 3, which is still one of my favorite fics we've read. Just because mm-hmm. it's, it's fun, it's crazy, it's random. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like the best fic like that is a structured chaos. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, because it's hard because you need to have that randomness yeah. and that kind of off the wall, but it needs to be grounded in like good character development. Yeah. So you have structure. to be skilled. You have to knowingly do yeah. it. Yeah. You can't yeah. just generate that. You can't no, just yeah, like have no. a computer. You, you know, you put could just names like input together. names into yeah. like some database. Yeah, that'd be a really sliders and say su- sex is sixty nine and laugh about it. It's immature. That'd be the, the most. Yeah. That'll probably well, be wait. the most boring like fifteen minutes of yeah, exactly. podcasting and ever. Someone who was going to be a doctor would never say put sex at sixty nine percent. Yeah. No. That's stupid. Absolutely not. Very dumb. Mm-hmm. So who would do that? No, I I don't know. I don't know. You can't just do that. No. You have to be skilled to write a good yes, crack. Yes, you have to be That's what legally you're skilled. Mm-hmm. Yes. You have to have a license. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a licensed thing. License Government to... gives it out. Right. Wow. Okay. So we had an interesting fic. Mm-hmm. We had an interesting choose-your-own-adventure. Quite frankly, I feel like people are bored out of their minds right now. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm lying. Could be. I don't know. No idea. Let us know. Yeah, let us know. Put it in the chat. Por favor. Mm-hmm. No. But no, I, I think you picked a good fic. Uh, I, think I you, didn't pick the fic. That's the beauty <laughs> of it. I didn't pick anything. I think you I did good, nothing today. I think you gave me a good choice, and I think it was uh, an interesting fic. It's just, well, we, we've, we've done a lot of serious ones um, recently mm-hmm. where we kind of, I mean, the Anthony Bourdain one wasn't very funny. Mm-hmm. The Sandman ones, I was trying to be as accurate as possible. Yeah, we, did, we did some pitch perfect ones. So exactly. We so we got to do a crack one. We got to mm-hmm. do a crazy fun one. And I think that's what we walls. did. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are here just for that. Hey, Captain Hook, catch. Yeah. Throw the grenade into your world. Yeah. Catch Captain Hook. Make it random. Yeah. So what are you stoked on right now, Ryan? Um, I am stoked on, at the moment, um, so as you know, I was previously stoked on Old Town Road, which was not, we we were very, it was very contentious. Let's not get back into that. It was a very, very controversial choice. Go right past it. As if, as a, uh, someone who does not like country music in any way, Mm -hmm. shape, or form, I am stoked on a country artist. Okay. Who is also not your traditional country artist, but his music is. Okay. Um, the artist's name is Orville Peck. Okay. Orville Peck. And he breaks norms because he's from Toronto. All right. And he's gay, which are not, not normal things that you would, you would associate with classic country western, yeah. which is the genre he sings. And he, he sounds a lot like, like at once it'll sound like, well, this is like a really good Elvis mm-hmm. kind of breakup song, that kind of like southern okay. thing. But he's got the deep baritone of like a johnny cash he can hit a johnny cash and um his um the first song off his album which is escaping me dead of night um he does a little roy orbison slash walmart yodeling kid high pitched singing which you don't see that often no just very especially in modern country very classic country look i'm not going to go back into the discussion that we had about old town road Mm -hmm. i won't do that again Mm -hmm. but what i will say is there are very valid arguments currently Mm -hmm. regarding the country music scene that a lot of modern country is not by definition country right so i'm i'm happy that someone don't care if they're from canada or not Mm -hmm. is taking the initiative to sort of harken back to that oh it's nice it's classic i would like to hear that there's a there's a there's a track and it's just it's the like country like steel string guitar and yes. he does, he's okay. just talking over it mm-hmm. like he's not well i went on down the, like that's a like, country trope right it's there it's so that's good a western yeah the most intriguing thing about him is that he wears a mask and no one knows who he is really yep What's he wears the these look like? it looks like a lone ranger mask but there's like things oh, hanging that's off so of it cool. so he ha- he makes his own masks and you can mm-hmm. never you don't, it, they don't know his so name so you don't even know if he's really gay what if that's all just an act could be wow could be who knows he probably knows. No, he probably yeah, he knows. Yeah, no. yeah. He wouldn't go out of your way to you know put that out in the country genre. Mm-hmm. You know, if he was a pop star, maybe. So but. yeah, that's what I am. What's the song? Stoked you're, upon? You're, is there a particular song um, that someone? If, if 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 the listener has time to listen to one Orville Peck song, what's okay. the one to go listen to? If you're trying to capture them and make them uh, listen to the whole album, what are they I mean, listening to? It's it, the kind of it's the lead. Um, he has one album, Pony, and it's the lead track off that album. And it's kind of like his most famous one, and it is the most like weird, somber mm-hmm. country, like 
heartbreak country western song, and it's Dead of Night. Okay, it's a very good song. Yeah, all right. Not a, not something you'd bang going down the road no, to. No, yeah, there are some on that album, but this is um, this is that's definitely like a really classic, well done song. Yeah, interesting. Okay, all right. So I'm currently stoked on the ongoing saga of me getting accepted into graduate school. Mm-hmm. I recently uh, got my schedule put together. Ooh. Yes. And of course, my one of my advisors... Running from boulders, 101. That would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, how to measure sand in comparison to a gold statue, mm-hmm. 102. Snakes took that as and an why they shouldn't exist, yeah. Yes. I'm right there with you on that one. Mm-hmm. However, uh, no, so I, I registered for my classes... And slowly but surely, as the start of the school year approaches, it's becoming more real, and it's starting to feel a lot cooler. Mm. Yeah. You're not getting nervous? I'm getting a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. I've been uh, reading my eyes out, trying Mm -hmm. to prepare. Mm -hmm. Reading fiction, such as my one of my advisors suggested, like I said Mm -hmm. previously. Very happy that I'm kind of going down the Neil Gaiman path. I even had a Twitter poll of what book I should read after Neverwhere, Mm -hmm. and they... Obviously, I knew it was going to happen. Shouldn't even have made it a choice. Good Omens. Mm-hmm. And it's not because they don't want to read Good Omens. It's because people are only suggesting that because of the TV show. Right. It's, it's of the moment. It's okay. It's, it's of the moment right now. I, I, I knew it was going to happen. Mm-hmm. I, I shouldn't have even... I don't even... How many books does he have? It's uh, it's actually not as long as you'd think. I didn't Especially think so. if, you, if you exclude his short stories collections mm-hmm. and exclude... He has... Not like self-help, but... Something like that, where he, it's it's not really fiction. He's just sort of talking about writing, and he's talking about uh, good practices mm. just for life and stuff like that. It's just really cool. Uh, one of the books he wrote was based off of a speech he gave, a commencement speech for a graduation. So he, I mean, he's written a couple of things like that. Mm-hmm. But as far as single works of fiction go, uh, you could probably, I mean, I think you could probably count them all on one hand. Or not on one hand, on your hands. Now, now remember... I had that birth defect. I, I technically have six fingers. So are we talking my hands or standard issue human I think hands? either, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, technically, if you're counting mine, you can also count yours mm. if you had more fingers. Mm-hmm. The, the whole uh, rectangle is a square, but square isn't a rectangle. So right. No, no, no. What? No, other way around. Mm-hmm. Square is a rectangle. Rectangle isn't a square. Square is all, yeah, yeah, all yeah, four yeah, sides. Yeah, yeah. They're all rhombuses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're, all, they're all rhombi. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I've been I've been reading like crazy. Uh, read a couple of nonfiction works too, just to try to get ready for my studies. Mm-hmm. I've been kind of really delving in deep. Did I did I say what I was going to be studying? Did I did I mention that yet? I can mention that too. Yeah, you're going to be an uh, antiquarian. No, Indiana I'm Jones. not going to be an antiquarian. Did I did I say what I was going to study? No. Oh, uh, would you like to hear? No. Okay, that's fine. No, I don't have to say. Totally fine here. So have a great note. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say anyways, Ryan. Go for it. You dickhead. Yeah, it's not my stoked on. It's your stoked it's on. My- <laughs> uh, so I'm going to be studying uh, digital and physical organization of the alt-right mm. to see if they are big in presence online only. Is the Unite the Right rally from a couple years ago a fluke? Mm-hmm. Is it going to grow mm-hmm. if Donald Trump gets elected, re-elected? Already been elected once. Mm-hmm. That's so, already happened. That's that can never yeah. change. Yeah, that has been written in the history books already. So ink is dry. That one. Yeah, there ink's, we go. ink's <laughs> dry, folks. Been dry for a couple of years. Sorry. So yeah, just gonna be studying that. It's it's a lot deeper than that, but no, it's, it of, sounds incredibly deep. Just to say, like, yeah. yeah, I'm just gonna study that. That's something that I, I that is that. something <laughs> that is most pressing, and I think a lot of people. There's a lot yeah. of fear, so people really want to know yeah. what you're studying. When I visited DC, I was in an Uber, and I was talking to a guy about how I was going back to school. The driver, and I just like casually mention it, and he's like, "Whoa, tell me more!" And I'm like, "Ah, shit." Mm-hmm. So like, I guess I do casually just sort of pass that off mm-hmm. whenever I mention well, it. Well, because you're coming at it from a very like, oh, I'm gonna have to do this, like all the technical yeah. I, academic I aspects every, of it. Yeah, I know all the work that's gonna go into it. Right, it's very sensationalist, and people just want to know. We just yeah. want to know what the answer is. Yeah, and it, tell I, me the answer already. For a cultural anthropologist, it's very different than a journalist. So journalists will go about answering that question one way. I have to go about answering that another way, Mm -hmm. a way I believe is uh, more effective, more more in detail. And whereas a journalist might write at max maybe a 5,000-word expose or something like that. Multi Uh, stories and a couple days spread out in the New York Times or whatever. If I use this uh, for my doctoral thesis or my doctoral dissertation, Mm -hmm. I apologize, it's going to be, you know, book length. 
Sure. Over 100 pages worth of research, Oof. likely. Yikes. Yeah, so I've already started reading some books, just sort of prepare me for that. Not about Nazism, but just about uh, stigmas and uh, totalitarianism and mm. sort of some baseline cultural studies to get me back into the swing of things, because it's been a couple of years since I graduated. I am stoked on a gay masked cowboy, yeah. and you are stoked on something that is awesome. No, no, I no, I'm stoked on something that is uh, boring and won't get any funding. Oh, man, so I don't, I don't know about that. That sounds, really, <laughs> that sounds really cool. Well, thank you. So yes, that's I'm stoked on picking my schedule. That was the original stoked on. Uh-huh. But of course, I elaborated. Mm-hmm. I gave a little more personal information. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so that's sort of that's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm very excited, very stoked on that. And I really do look forward to working out a way that Ryan and I can continue to do this show even as I move away mm-hmm. and get very busy with studies. Well, maybe we'll just have the computers write all our Yeah, the things. computers yeah. can write it. They did a have, sm- smashing job Yeah, today. we'll do a deep fake like they did for Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. That'd be awesome. <laughs> do you know or do you remember what was considered full-time at UF for a student for credit hours? Twelve. Twelve, yeah, it's sort of like the baseline. Yeah, but fifteen was sort of normal. Yeah, yeah. So like five classes. Yeah, fifteen about. to eighteen. Yeah, sure. Yeah. What was the most you took? At once? Uh, I did seventeen. Yeah, seventeen. Mm-hmm. I did seventeen. Yeah, that was the most I ever did. It was it was still five classes, but one of the oh yeah no, classes they're, was they're longer. Meaty. Yeah, when you're yeah. doing seventeen, eighteen, you're feeling it. Oh yeah, no, I felt it that semester. It was one of my best semesters too because I took it seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a definitely yeah. a tipping point. Mm-hmm. Where, yeah, where once like, you put so oh, many on, you're yeah. like, well, this is my life now, and you actually yep. do better. Mm-hmm. That middle ground is yeah. kind of where you can misstep. And that's why I don't really want to be complacent with what I'm doing now. I'm like, you know what? Scare yourself into working hard. Mm. And that's sort of what I'm trying to do. Right. Do you know what is average for a graduate program, at least my graduate program? Mm. Either it's going to be short, like small amount, like very mm-hmm. intense, or it's going to be like, I'm going to say yeah. like 20. 20? Or is it like six? My advisor said, please don't take any more than nine. So three classes. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's at UF, that's considered a part-time student. That's, that's full-time for graduate. But for graduate, I'm just saying for an undergrad. Yeah, right? undergrad, that's part-time, but full-time for grad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm going to be taking three classes a semester about until my last year and where mm-hmm. I'm just uh, researching and writing. That'll be, that'll be enough. That'll keep you busy. Oh, no. That'll I, keep you out of trouble. Yeah, yeah. Keep you and one trouble. of them is going to be technically an independent study because mm-hmm. the teacher isn't going to physically be there. I have to Skype him once a week. Yeah, I'm not. Eh, we'll see. You put, meet him on chat roulette, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just browse chat. Roulette well, hello, Alex. Until I find him. <laughs> he's got like, yeah. like he's in like a weird. Where, yeah. where's, where's this person going to be? He's going to be uh, first Michigan, and oh, then okay. I believe Germany or Paris. No, he's going to be in like a like a silk tent in the in the desert. No. Be like, hello, Alex. Hello, Alex. I am coming to you from the Sahara mm-hmm. Desert today. From the Sahara. Yeah, unfortunately, no. But yes, so that's going to be like independent study. So I'm only going to go to uh, campus twice a week, really, mm. unless I get a TA position, which I'm sure that could possibly be a yeah, future dude. stoked on for Absolutely. me if I get oh, one. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm stoked on. More inf- more personal information. Probably tired of hearing about that, but mm-hmm. that's my life, people. Sorry. I do more than podcast. Mm. Believe yeah. it or not. Yeah. Believe, <laughs> believe it or not, with the amount of time I'm on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ryan's like, shit, I get so many notifications. Yeah, it's true. Blows up. So, I think that about ends things. That rap think? mercifully wraps it up. Mer- <laughs> <laughs> With that, I hope you all have a lovely night, mm-hmm. lovely day, lovely afternoon, mm-hmm. lovely uh, mid-morning, depending on where you're listening, or when you're listening to this. Mm-hmm. I hope or if you- you're in some plane where time and yeah. space do not exist. Yeah. Uh, I have hope a lovely you, whatever that is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whatever that informs. If this is sent off into the airwaves and some aliens are listening to us, have a lovely Gwarganog. Yeah, Gwarganog to you, sir. Yes. Zweet yes, Bob yes, and yes. Tiddlyboo. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. 666. And so I would like to say thank you once again for listening. We do have a YouTube channel. It's Suckman Fanfic. You can subscribe to us there. We have a Twitter. You can... Follow us on there, mm-hmm. Suck My Fanfic. We have a Facebook. We have a Tumblr that has, I don't think, been... So much activity. Go check yes, it out. Uh, yeah, so much. Tumblr's radioactive uh, yeah, right Overwhelming now. Yep. amount of activity. And the only thing I could ask, if you don't want to be a patron for us because you cannot afford it, which just is totally Venmo fine, me five bucks. Or we just aren't engaging enough to mm-hmm. earn your patronage, mm-hmm. we would, if you enjoyed us at least a little bit, we would really appreciate some... Ratings on the... It's not iTunes, because iTunes is gone on mm. Apple Podcasts. Yeah, just sprinkle it in there. Sprinkle it in there. Sprinkle and it, you know, some stars in there. Give us yeah. a one star. I mean, I don't care. Give yeah. us anything. Unfortunately, with the way that technology works, the only way that it will start suggesting us to more people organically, 
I guess it'd be inorganically, but mm-hmm. would be we need the humans to vote, yes. To we vote need the on humans us. to put in a little yeah. time with the reviews and the stars. If you've already done it, we really sincerely appreciate yes. it. Yes, and if you have yet to do it, but is, are considering, you know, it only really takes two minutes of your time if that's what you want to put in, and we would sincerely appreciate it. So, anything to remember, Ryan? You know, uh, sometimes we make choices that don't necessarily end up the best, but at the end of the day, let us all cross the river and rest under the shade of the trees. 666, everybody. Have a good one. Hail Satan.